Hello and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Today the first order of the day is to find some bait. As if on cue that there is what we're looking for. That's a patch of sand eels coming through on the sounder. I can tell the sand eels just by the size of that but yeah that's what we're looking for. Hopefully there'll be a few mackerel in amongst them. The mackerel have been quite sporadic so far this year. They've been in, they've been gone, they've been in. Ah, well. Hopefully we can find some bait and then we'll get fishing. That's what we're after. Quick release one, that one. to an area of reef to see if I can't find a little bit more bait fish and I maybe at the same time pull out a pollock or a bass. Areas like this you often find scad. Scad is just another name for horse mackerel. But they're good bait. And that there... That there is a very nice scad. That is a large one. I might actually get a weight on that. Oh. You need to be careful with these. You need to be careful with these because they are covered in spines. All across the dorsal is a spike. And if you can see this under here, those have got spikes on and all the way down the lateral line have all got spikes in. So yeah, that's what we're after. <laughs> there was actually two on there when I brought it up but I lost one at the side I've crushed the barbs of these hooks on these lures just to make the fish easier to unhook when I get them to the side of the boat the negative of that being that sometimes they bounce themselves off I have a couple of things a couple of flicks around with this. <coughs> the tides are quite small at the moment. We haven't got very big tides. What that means is there isn't an awful lot of movement between high tide and low tide. Now that generally, as a rule, means that it's not very good for lure fishing. Predatory fish that attack lures, they generally like a bit of tide, a bit of movement. That doesn't mean that you can't pick the odd one up. They're just generally a little bit more sluggish when the tides are slack. I've just been hit by a ras there. <laughs> Tell it's a ras. A ras or a trigger fish. Just like a real savage knock. They're terrible for biting the tails off those. <laughs> yeah. 
little teeth marks in his. Damn! <laughs> All I'm doing is I'm fishing a, uh, a small soft plastic jig. These are um, Storm Biscay 360 Coastal Minnows in 30 gram. Come in all sorts of sizes. These are 46. I think these are 72. Just match them to the size of the tide. The depth of water and the strength of tide. Obviously stronger tide and deeper water you use a heavier one. Yeah, they've absolutely nailed it for me with Pollock. Yeah, these... Um, Summer keeps hitting it. I'm just fishing it vertically. I'm just casting up ahead and just bouncing along the seabed. Hoping for a bass, a ras, a pollock, a cod, anything that might like eating a little sand eel. Nice little Kelpie Pollock there. Ooh. Oh. Something hit that in a hurry. Stopped it dead in its tracks, didn't it? You have to be careful with bass. You have to be careful with bass because they're covered in spines. But there is a lovely fresh run silver. There's the little. There's another nice pollock. I do like pollock when they've been in the kelp because they've got that lovely orange and gold. Yeah, I wouldn't really consider taking a pollock unless it was twice that size. Catch them all day, I love catching them.
took that one well, didn't they? <laughs> right in there. I've put the anchor down. This is a new spot. I've never anchored here before. The place where we wanted to go to, the tide isn't quite right in there yet. So I've put the anchor down here instead, just because I thought it looked like an area that I'd like to try. Sand against rock. And I've got a couple of baits down on the bottom. And all they are is it's a little bit of the scad that I got earlier, cut into thin strips, presented on a 3-0 specimen extra on a long flowing tray. As simple as can be. Yeah, all we've got is we've got like two areas of rock and the bit in the middle is a bit of sand. And I'm just thinking that anything that's in around here is going to cut through that little gully. So while there's still only just a tiny amount of tide running through there, I thought I'd give it a go. We have been getting a few little erratic bites, but I think it might just be waiting so far. This is the hook length. It's literally that simple. It's a 3O hook, 3O J hook. And this is 40 pound mono. I'd say that's about two and a half feet long, ending in a barrel swivel. Unfortunately, while the tide's where it is, we have got the sun looking directly at the camera. When the tide turns a bit, it should swing us round. What did I say? Dogfish. First one to find the boat was a dogfish. And that's all the bait was, just a little strip of the scad stomach, the scad belly. Because we are on slack water, that's why I said I was expecting some dogfish. Slack water dogfish. There you go. I like to have my baits. The main point is that your hook point is proud. The hook is sticking out. But also, I like a little bit of flapping on the end so it wiggles about in the tide. What I'm hoping for, anchored here, raise hus top. Might even be looking, you might even catch like a bass passing through. Sadly, one of the problems of fishing, like. Sadly, one of the problems of fishing in an area like what we are is these. I believe it's actually got the hook in its mouth. A hoofing great spider crab. Let go. What are you going to do? Alright, watch the rod. A very sluggish very lazy dogfish. There you go. I think what I'm going to do from now on is I'm not even going to bother turning the camera on. I'll just tell you how many I've had by the end of the session.
nine dogfish, three spider crabs. It's time to move. Unfortunately, somehow in all the commotion, the camera didn't get switched on properly. So you don't see the landing of this fish. There you go. One last look at her. Picking them up, there is a soft part either side of here. But yeah, I'd give her give her probably eight pound. Fantastic. Let's get her back. See you later. See that? I chucked it out while I was dealing with that rain. There's a bite there, look. Just chucked it out while I was dealing with that rain. Because I thought, you never know, I might pick up a bonus fish. And there is, there is some having a go at it. And another dogfish. For anyone who's not familiar with dogfish, the proper name is a lesser spotted cat shark. They are a member of the shark family. And they eat everything. They have a horrible habit of throwing up on the boat. There you go. And the best way to hold them is if you can get hold of their tail and their head at the same time. Like that. And then use your other hand to unhook with. Otherwise, they bring their tail up and they rub you. They are incredibly hardy and resilient fish. And very common. Let's get that anchor up and move spots. I've re-anchored in this new spot and the wind has picked up. But we are getting a nice bite on this rod. Just exactly the same method, exactly the same rigs, same baits, just a different location. See the bite? Yeah. There look. anything out of like rhythm so when it's going it's just the movement of the water it's just the movement of the boat the movement of the water as soon as there's like an erratic that's a fish see see That's a ray. It picked up the bait and it was running towards the boat. You see, I was very gently trying to bring the line in, bring the line in until I could connect with the fish. And it was from all the way out there to underneath the boat.
there you go. There's the hook in its mouth. And all that this was, was just a very simple sliding ledger. Now the tide is running in that direction, but unfortunately the wind's supposed to be northerly and it's now running almost westerly, so we've got wind against tide. I had hoped that the, <laughs> I had hoped that the tide would have swung the boat around, so we'll be facing that way away from the away from the sun. But you just have to make the most of it. Fresh bait cast out. See, that's why I always have. I make up like half a dozen hook lengths and I pre-bait three or four. So as soon as you bring a fish in or something like that, it could be an empty trace, it could be a dogged out trace, it could be a fish, put it in a bucket of water, unclip your trace, clip on a fresh one, cast straight out. I was just thinking, if you haven't got a bait in the water, you're not gonna catch a fish, are you? That five minutes there of Unhooking, pre-baiting, unhooking, rebaiting, casting out, that five minutes there, over an entire session, that could turn out to be an extra hour's worth of fishing time. Let's get this guy unhooked, get him back. bite that this gave to start with, I thought it's got to be something special. This feels like a doggy now. I don't know. That'll be why it feels like a doggy. It's a baby ray! <laughs> now this one this one gave a bigger bite than that other one. <laughs> the rod was nearly going to disappear, look at the size of it. Take a photo of that little guy, he's a stunner. Yeah, Rod was going, dish, dish. Thought, oh yeah, it's gonna be a cracking fish that. Thought it might have even been a bass, the way that we hit it and ran it. <laughs> Punching above his weight. See it? Must have seen that one, surely. That's a bite. Drop dip. The wind really is making a nuisance of itself now. It's strengthened and we have exactly wind against tide. So as you can probably see when I'm talking, we will be swinging around. Covering about 180 degrees, so you, it shows you how much. And it never makes for good fishing when you're fishing at anchor. Your lines just end up getting tangled and under the boat. But we did pull out some lovely fish. I've, had, I've lost count of the number of species that we've had. Tons of dogfish. <laughs> yeah, we'll fish these baits out for another 10 minutes. If I catch anything more, I will put it in. If I don't, then I won't. I hope you've enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you later.